difficulties. I just want to close the parenthesis on something that happened from last show. Oh. Incredible story. You ready? Yeah. That actually speaks about connecting with people. So last show you had asked me, or not you had asked me, we were talking about who would be some guests that we'd really want to have on our respective shows. And you probably don't remember what my two celebrities were. Do you? I, by I, any don't, chance? I don't remember. Clint Eastwood. Mm. And first, I appreciate his politics. I, I've been watching him since I was a kid in Lebanon. Uh, number two was Burt Bacharach, who's, I don't, do you remember who that is? Bert, I remember the name. Burt Bacharach is the uh, music composer who's basically written songs for everybody. Uh, he was featured in one of the Austin Powers movie oh. where he the guy says, ladies and gentlemen, Burt Bacharach. You know, anyways, uh, after our chat aired, I go on my Instagram. I have a personal DM, private DM from what looks like the account of Burt Bacharach, who's, you know, arguably the biggest musical, you know, composer in the United States. So I'm extremely excited. It turns out it was his son who said, oh, your, your clip with Joe Rogan uh, was passed on to me. Uh, and I think I would, it would be great for, I'd love for my dad to come on your show. Oh. And now cut to the, punchline it never ended up happening he recently passed away so perhaps he wasn't i mean he was like 94 95 but just the fact that you and i are having a conversation someone else picks it up and then my word could not my world can intersect with burt Bacharach, whom there is no conceivable place where his word and her world and mine would ever connect that's the beauty of life wow that is the beauty of life that's awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You Clint, are a connector, sir. I try to be. Clint Eastwood would be an interesting guy to talk to. Like, the guy still works. You know, he's like 93 years old. He's still out there making movies. Yeah. Well, he still I, enjoys it. I remember in Lebanon when I, I you know, I only learned English in, in, when I moved to, to Canada when I was 11. And I, I got all the communication I needed to get. Even though there wasn't much dialogue in the Spaghetti Westerns, I would look at him and I would say, that's that's the man, you know, and so he's remember every which way but loose. Of course, he hung around with an orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bit later, right? It's that's a fucking movie. That's in the seventies, right? <laughs> I I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it was the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played a bare knuckle boxer. That's right. Who traveled around that's with an right. orangutan? That's right. I, yeah, I think that sounds like seventy-seven, <laughs> but I'm talking in the sixties. I'm talking, you know, 65, 67, 68, when I'm, you know, four or five years old, and I'm watching this guy in, in, in Lebanon. Wow. That's the power of, you know, the male archetype. It's, it's incredible. That is still Every Which Way But Loose, right? I'm not conflating two movies, right? That's the movie that, where he was the bare knuckle boxer, isn't it? I think that sounds right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I think at the time, <laughs> his, his love interest in, the, in that movie. What the hell was that, Jamie? What was that? Jesus, Jamie. You got a wrong tab yeah. open up, son. Start the trailer. That's How the dare first. you? Now, how about taking in a new movie? Okay. What'd you I guess mind? that's what this trailer is, and I don't know why there's nothing on it. Oh, you can't see the video? <laughs> I don't know yet. Oh, what cool. is happening? Okay. <sighs> yeah. But it's I weird. Oh, there's a that's video. That's the one. Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know what that yeah. voice is over it. It seems like someone was... Oh, I said 77. It's 78. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. This is a dumbass movie. <laughs> <laughs> Those movies are great, though. Yeah, I yeah. love movies from that era. They're like ridiculous, like, like uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Jackie Gleason. Yeah. You got Burt, Burt Reynolds. Reynolds yeah. Sally Field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. That that's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Gleason plays a, a cop. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite movie of all time, if you had to pick one? I really don't think I have one. But you know what I watched recently, I rewatched is um, 2001, Space Odyssey. Oh, right. I forgot how good that was. That movie is amazing. It's not just amazing, it's amazing visually. And it's from 1968. Yeah, it's amazing. The, the special effects are so good, like uh, all through it. Like even the apes in the beginning, you know, the scene where they're evolving. Yeah. When they encounter the monolith. Yeah. The fucking special effects on the apes is pretty goddamn good for 1968. Yeah, yeah. My, my all-time favorite, the original 12 Angry Men. Mm. I first saw, and actually it speaks to what we talked about earlier about how you can't get someone to change their mind when they're in a tribal mindset. Because I watched the, the movie for the first time in a 
first semester, I was an MBA student, and I was taking a uh, organizational behavior class where the professor assigned us that movie to watch it to demonstrate group dynamics. Because for those of you who don't, have, have you seen it, Joe? I don't think I have. Oh, you need to rent it tonight. So basically, who's it, in it? It's uh, Henry Fonda. Oh, That's I, it. That's okay. the one. Okay, I think I have, but it was a long, long time ago. So let me tell you the premise. Okay. Uh, Twelve guys get together in a room. They're trying to discuss whether a guy should be put to de uh, you know, found guilty. They take a, a poll. Eleven say he's absolutely guilty. Let's go home. One guy, Henry Fonda, says, "Hey, let's let's sit and talk about it." The rest of the movie is how he gets each of the eleven other guys to flip their positions. And so that's why I had watched it in that MBA course because it demonstrates how, you know, there are techniques you can use to try to persuade people. Of course, today mm. you could almost never do it. I can never convince Rob Reiner of anything, but you know. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think some people are just like really deeply cemented in their belief systems. Right. And I mean, maybe they can relax. It's still, it's still, you're, you're a human being. If you're a human being and you're willing to look at objective truth, you can realize that like there's some other things afoot there's like there's a tribal aspect to all of our ideological um, problems that makes objective reasoning a giant problem it does, it does like it gets in the way of everything because people are so tribally committed right now and that they're tribally committed to this idea that the other side is the end of the world if they take power